Hello everyone, and welcome to Coffee with an Archaeologist, episode 6. Uh, if you were watching the live stream, apologies, the internet broke, and we should have some friends here, I wonder if they can hear me, can you hear me? Apparently no, oops, my internet's gone down again. So I'm just going to talk momentarily and see can we re-establish a connection because uh, why is everything broken? Air uh, provides coverage to 99% of all of Ireland except where I live apparently. Um, oh no. Can you hear me? <laughs> oh. oh. Momentarily re-establishing connection. Oh, oh god. Hacking, yeah. hacking the neural network. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, now we can. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I, I, I love how I constantly cut out in the, during the important parts, but at least it's like they, the audience can hear me, but we lose you this time. But, oh, this is really frustrating. So, can you hear me? Oh, shit. Lost them again. Let's try this internet. Do, 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 do. Oh. Okay. Brazil, I'm Antarctica. On, <laughs> I'm on my phone internet now again. I shouldn't Ooh, be okay. as clear, but. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually better. That was it? The expense. Yeah, yeah, it's in the expensive it's internet. Cool. God damn it. Yeah. So, yeah, as. Uh, oh, first of all, <clears throat> disclaimer. This show is not for children. If you are oh. a minor, please go play Fortnite or Minecraft or something because <laughs> you're not off. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Fuck off, you little shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, so, below should be a donation bar, but it's turned off for some reason. Why did that happen? I don't know. It's it will be active once this video is up on YouTube, I'm sure. No, I mean on my, my OBS. It was there a second ago, but then it turned off. Huh. Uh, maybe, I have just, to, uh, maybe I have to open the window. Gone. Yeah. <coughs> Where is my donation bar gone? Where's my money? <laughs> Take it easy, Naka. Uh, <laughs> Oof. Discord audio icons. Oh, actually, so I'm, I'm I'll turn that. I'm on. just gonna ask, yeah. just um, beforehand, if someone donates you one hundred dollars, are you gonna shoot yourself in the dick as well? No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna turn you on my Discord it, icons, yeah. and then uh, I'm gonna make them fit. Oh, but guys, Naka isn't an e beggar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an e beggar. I've never been an e beggar in my life. <laughs> Oh. oh. Okay. There we go. Okay. Shade has been tossed. Yeah. Yes. I'm still trying Shade to figure out why my Streamlabs bar isn't working. That is weird. Anyway, let's just continue on because fuck it. Apparently, my donation bar is off for some reason. But, uh. Hmm. I don't know why. Oh, because it's all fucked. Oh god damn it! I'm not. Really, I'm not <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> everything just broke on me as soon as we tried to go live. <sighs> You're. Sorry. Frustration aside, let's continue. <laughs> so today we'll be discussing, as you can see in the title, the post-glacial period, uh, particularly focusing more so on Ireland, but we can also discuss Europe and whatnot. Um, f feel free, guys, to chime in with anything you want to talk about or any comments, um, or if you want me to elaborate on something. Um, yeah, I can possibly do that. So, uh, the Ice Age ends around, I guess, sometime around um, 10,000 BC, and uh, mm -hmm. then we kind of move into the Paleolithic, which is kind of ice ages during this period as well but yeah so humans first kind of appear in this period um the mm -hmm. earliest known human remains which i had somewhere here history of the world no not that one Doo -doo. 
Well, the earliest known modern human is, well, I guess one of them is this one called Jabal Ihorond, is an early one, it's Turkish, um, so you get to hear me speak um, um, Arabic, um, or attempt Arabic. to speak Arabic, which is... Foreign a, languages. Yeah. And this is the closest that we have to human. Uh, it, no, this is a, a early um, Homo sapien, so this is modern mm. human, one one of the early ones, which is uh, the Turks are the closest thing you have to human. You heard it here first. Though. <laughs> right. um, the which is no comment. Turkey. <laughs> uh, I know there's a few others from Israel and from uh, the Fertile Crescent. So uh, yeah, so we know people first came into mo modern people settled in the first till crescent because that's a good place to uh, set up because you have a nice river and fertile land to uh, grow crops and shit but yeah so, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my uh, fallback thing is let's just talk about armor and shit but for now we'll attempt to stay on track um, All right. we won't delve too much into Mesopotamia uh, oh, actually, shit. you know what? Let's let's discuss Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia since we've already okay. brought up Turkish places in Syria and Syria uh, and um, oh, slightly yeah. knowledgeable. Yeah, the uh... oh, it's it's an Ark server from what I remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sar Sargon of Akkad's Ark server. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Does anyone know him? Did they DM him and see if he'll join the stream? The, oh uh, god, he, 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 if you could get him on though, it would actually be funny because yeah. he would go on for hours about this kind of stuff. So. I, yeah, um, he definitely would. Mm -hmm. I like I've, at most I attempted to contact uh, his um, his assistant, um, but uh, when that time when Skog asked me to send Sargon the um, Brexit Chan image he made, but uh, mm -hmm. your man just ignored me because I don't think he knows who I am. But uh, yeah, probably he, he's spoken him directly. To, yeah, he's spoken to him before, and uh, I think he's hidden as well on Discord. So I, yeah. I can't. Yeah, I've only, I've only spoken to him via like Merc and then his Oxford and shit. I would say either uh, email him or get him on Twitter, or if you're very lucky, you can get Nucker or someone to ask him. But yeah, yeah, you'll have to ask them. Actually, yeah, we can maybe. Ask Anoka another time. But yeah. Ask him, yeah, when I feel yeah. a bit better. Because uh, some of the um, Mesopotamian um, cultures, I guess, is the Sumerians and the Akkadians. But, uh, yeah. We could we could try and get him on for like a special guest episode. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do a special Ooh. guest episode where we just... Uh, He'd probably do a one-off, I'm sure, if he has time. Yeah. yeah, we can talk about Bronze Age stuff. Because um, he might be more interested in the kind of the Bronze Age, and he can maybe show off his sword that uh, he's proud about. <laughs> oh, <woo. laughs> oh yeah. No, so, I do want to ask. Mm -hmm. Mesopotamia fell after uh, so many years. Mm -hmm. What happened in between time between Mesopotamia and where the next civilization basically? Um, popped up. Uh, t t t I'm trying to find the earliest reference still. Here it is. Uh, the fourth millennium BC is the earliest. Uh, and then that, that we're talking right. more. That can't be right. We're talking more, oh, more Mediterranean century. or. Uh, yeah, it would be um, that area of uh, Turkey in kind of. I gotta uh, zoom in a bit and try and see it better. It's like Iraq, Syria region. Uh, Iraq, Syria, Iran. Mm -hmm. Just at the south mm -hmm. south part of Turkey. Uh, yeah, from Aleppo as far as uh, is that Lagos? Lagos? I oh, think where is Aleppo? Aleppo is in Syria. I think it's the capital of Syria. No, wait. Damascus is the capital of Syria, I think. But, where is Aleppo? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, the uh, yeah, Aleppo, 
Um, Palm oh, didn't realize Pal Palmyra was in uh, Syria. I thought it was in uh, I Iraq. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I'm learning as we go. But yeah, uh, so because I'm all over the place, the appearance of Mesopotamia is around what three thousand BC, uh, according to uh, oh, that's cuneiform which is the, the script that was used in Mesopotamia. Um, Egypt, the earliest evidence for Egypt is what? 3,100, which is 100 years before that. Uh, hang on, what's Stonehenge? Stonehenge is 3,000 BC, which is similar to uh, Mesopotamia. So around 3,000 humans just started popping up like how we are to. Uh, slightly today. Um, these are the early civilizations. I'll, I'll get to why I'm specific, specifically talking about them in a second. The New Grange is a hundred years older than the pyramids, uh, BC, um, which is the Irish one. Uh, because yeah, we're fucking kicking ass there. What is Glebeki mm -hmm. Tepe is just at the edge of uh, Turkey and still technically in the Fertile Crescent. That date on that site is. 10th millennium BC E. Yeah. So, yeah, that one's probably the oldest site on my list, which is one of the earliest structures that we're aware of. Familiar with. Yeah. I, I was going to share it on the stream, but I copyright. So, uh, maybe I'll put the text of this, how to spell it on the, um, on the stream, let me, or on the video. If I just... Do this and go boom, okay, boom. Let me stick this in here and make it bigger. So if anyone wants to uh, Google that name, I'll just leave the spelling there so that they can see it. And for ye in the PC, right. I'm gonna post it in the green room. Uh, if you wanted to have a look at it. Go. Yeah, Globekli Tepe. It's uh, Turkish or Arabic, but uh, Tepe means temple, I think. Um, I don't know what the first part means, but it's the, the, the area that it's in, which is Let's a... Um, I'm just currently looking at the... Uh, the mm, uh, it's um, Turkish for Hot Belly Hill. Ah, okay. But yeah. It's a really interesting site because it was uh, constructed um, with some really nice stone carved um, animal symbols um, and then immediately buried for some reason, mm -hmm. which is really unusual. Knowing the region, I don't know when it was excavated. Um, oh, there's Shut I'll do talk about Shut Hayek in a second as well. Um, where is the excavation date? It was, it was designated in 2018. It could be the 80s, or I'm thinking of Chatel Hoyak. Oh, 1996. Mm, By the German Archaeological sure. Institute. It's at the very top. Uh, it's at the bottom of the paragraph, bottom paragraph at the very top. Ah. Uh. Yeah. The German Archaeological Institute. Uh, and it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Yeah, hmm. M much like um, Skalik Michael is also a, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, which is the Star Wars First Jedi Temple. Oh, some type. Yeah, <laughs> the uh, it's a I Irish mo um, kind of monastery that uh, is like isolated, oh, oh. and they used it for the First Jedi Temple. Because Ireland sells off its uh, heritage sites for money because we need as much money coming into the country as possible. <laughs> Don't want another famine, do we? You know, oh, there was a there was a <laughs> there was a joke going around a few years ago that um, because the Irish government was selling off our national monuments for different programs and stuff, that uh, McDonald's would put like a big M on like fucking cliffs of Moher. <laughs> <laughs> Like, fucking hell! Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, 
Ah, yeah. Where was I? Someone has to do it. Yeah, we talk about Shatel Hoyok. Shatel Hoyok is a um, oh. well, Glebeki Tepe is like a late Mesolithic, early Neolithic um, site. Um, mm -hmm. So it's in that the kind of crossover period, but it's a temple and whatnot. But it's still a meeting place because you know temples are kind of a place you go to hang out with your buddies after some sort of ceremony. Um, <laughs> Yeah. After the ritual <laughs> sacrifices, yeah. yeah. The um, Shatel Hoyok, on the other hand, is more of a um, it's like a settlement, which is oh. also in Turkey. Um, so Shatel is fork, and Hoyok is Tomlemus. Oh, it's just like a mound or something. Okay, um, but yeah, it, it's uh, more of a uh, early settlement site that is uh, quite interesting because they have like a really like really weird motif with uh, auroch heads like bull, bull heads so again oh, like wow. we discussed with um, Ireland um, there's like a connection with animal like bulls and, and cows yep. uh, ruminants or whatever you want to refer to them as uh, Chateau Hoyok also has a similar thing but uh, with specifically aurochs and this is a good segue into what is an auroch. Uh, I might actually uh, try and get that picture up on screen as well. So while I'm talking about it, I'll try and add that. So uh, an auroch is basically like a an early version of a cow. So it's um, it's like a it's the mid stage evolution of a cow. Yeah, it's like the earlier stage in the evolution of the cow so it's the pre-cow cow uh let's call it pre-cow um, oh yeah and then get that don't get that image up desktop oh jesus it's that covering just, everything it's huge that just see oh that just means that the cows that how we know it have been Ten thousands, um, ten thousand years or so. Yeah, they've, they've been around for quite a while. Hang on, I bring that in front of them. Oh, Oof. crafty looking buggers back in the day. Yeah, put it in front of me. There we go. Well, yeah, the the aurochs are kind of like an early version of cow. They're um, kind of significantly larger. They're about maybe twice the size. Um, they're. There's one in Copenhagen in the Zoological Museum for any of the fans or anyone near Denmark. They're in mm -hmm. the Zoological Museum. They stayed, that one is dated to 7400 BC, which is a little bit after uh, our t initial time we started with. We're kind of all over the place at the moment because, to be honest, I didn't have much time to plan this, so I'm kind of mm -hmm. trying to keep with it. Actually, Highland cattle are their genome may have been um, secondarily introduced. By, um, so the European aurochs, the mo most modern, closest relative is probably the Highland cattle. You know those kind of ginger uh, Scottish cows that you normally see in like Braveheart yeah. or something. Um, <laughs> the ones they usually ride upon. <laughs> yes, the famous cow cavalry. <laughs> We, we we do the Scotland meetup. We'll get one and we'll get Nokia to ride around on it for a while. Scotland all, all forever. We'll get him a claymore and then yeah, we'll get him a two-handed claymore. So it's the most impractical thing imagine. <laughs> yeah. Like a cow, two-handed great sword. Like hell yeah, yeah. ride around Just... on it. But yeah, I'm trying to find a Just the early Nokia around domestication. Uh, for the aurochs, do, do, do. is there a description, horn size, no, behavior, ecology, habitat, domestication, there it is. Do, do, do. So yeah, around 10,000 BC, they start domesticating the aurochs, which is where we get modern cows from. And the aurochs, believe it or not, although they are a, uh, one of the, what's the word I'm looking for, large, what is it, megafauna. Um, although they are one of the megafauna, 
that actually survived up until fairly recently. So the last recorded one being killed is actually in the 1600s in Poland. So that's like pretty recent in comparison to... Uh, oh, hang on. 1800s in Moldova. Is that it? No, I, oh, that's something else. But yeah, like they lived them fairly recently. Um, these massive bloody cows. But yeah. Fucking megafauna lived until the 1800s. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Well, mm-hmm. this one in particular uh, of the megafauna. Oh, uh, that, that, I think that's well, just a Well, still, that uh, is. Oh, am I cutting out on you? Um, but yeah, um, I think it's... Uh, yeah, it's slightly choppy. 16th century, century illustrations of Orox. This one's 1481. But yeah, like they could have, yeah, lasted that long. Uh, in fact, I think there is evidence for a woolly mammoth that died out sometime during the, I think it's the early medieval period or the Bronze Age, I can't remember. But yeah, there's a woolly mammoth from Siberia that's pretty recent as well. Mm. And when I say pretty recent, I don't mean in the last 100 years, I mean in the last thousand years in context to ten thousand years but um yeah <laughs> I'm kind of rambling uh, oh yes <laughs> kind of rambling a bit um so what else can we talk about because I kind of didn't really plan this really great so do you guys know the dates for like Egypt Egypt is like 3100 BC and that's the prehistoric phase I guess of Egypt Um, the dynastic period begins in 3050 so uh, that's like the pre pre pharaohs Egypt oh okay Um, uh, Neanderthals surviving until 300 BC in Turkey? That doesn't sound right. I think that I'm misreading the, the dates on that. God damn Wikipedia can't make it simple and actually have the dates easy to oh. read. They have to I think it's Wikipedia in, been keeping it simple. It's in yeah. KYA, but I'm not sure what KIA is KYA is. Um Yeah, I can close that window. Mufalons. Mufalons are like the early an early version of sheep or if you want to be specific, urinals. Because that doesn't sound like taking a piss, does it? Um Yeah. <laughs> I I'm getting really confused because I'm swapping through windows here and a lot of the things make no sense. Because I'm looking at ur- urinal, and I'm like, that's pronounced. I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, I, and child. I gotta put post it in the uh, green room. Let's see if. Uh, um, ready. Uh, there we go. Should we have gone through? My internet's being You're weird. Cool. What'd you say? How do you pronounce it? Oh no, have I lost you? Oh, Dom's here. Hello, Dom. I don't think they can hear me. No. Oh. I... Uh, we can hear you. Yeah. That's good. How, how would you pronounce that? Uriel. Uh, Uriel. Yeah. yeah. I, I, for some reason, I see that and how I pronounce it is urinal. <laughs> you can also call them Chapo. Chapeau. They're also known as Akars or Chapeau or, or. Oh, I see that. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, yeah. um. You googled it. Yeah. This um this version of the Gestapo sheep. <laughs> Gestapo sheep. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> but yeah, the. These things look. Are they still around? 
Uh, possibly. I wouldn't be surprised. The Mulfalons certainly are. Uh, Mulfalons are from... Oh. Oh. Where are they from? France? Mm -hmm. Anatolia, France. Yeah, Anatolia is their region of the Fertile Crescent. Uh, words that I can't remember because I'm talking off the cuff. Hey. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at the U Uriel, Uriel, Akar Shapo, whatever the hell you pronounce it. And uh, it says, it, it, from, from Central Asia, Northern Iran and Western Ka Kazakhstan. But for some reason, I originally read Kazakhstan as Kekistan. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> We're doing it, boys. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, too we much can, star going. We can start the the fake uh, fake history and start <laughs> Kekistan <laughs> to domesticating Kekistan. the sheep. Uh, I mean, we have the Proto Indonesian Wars <laughs> <laughs> and the Finno Korean Hyper Wars because come on. Oof. But yeah, I'm just looking now at the new Grange, um, and they're talking about the light box or the roof box debate, which is very recent. It's in the last two years, I think. But I'm not going to touch on that because that is drama that I don't want to talk about. Um, All right. I guess we could talk about. Um, I could talk about a little bit of a. A kind of a, an issue with. Uh, modern archaeologists have with MJ O'Kelly the archaeologist who excavated and did the reconstruction of uh, um, Newgrange because uh, he kind of just built it in the way he thought it was done rather than you know because you know can't just <laughs> know how it's done oh yeah so I the, know that kind of problem so the reconstruction is just this big white kind of building so we don't even know if those white quartz stones were even part of the building or if they were just like some sort of uh, decorative like pathway around the structure so I guess it makes sense that they're part of the walls because they're big white and stand out on the in the landscape but still like you know looking at the picture of it now uh, let's see if I can uh, bring it up on the on the screen. Mm. I'm just gonna swap out the Oroch for uh, for it if I can remember where it is. Uh, doo -doo. That is not Newgrange. That is there. It is Newgrange. Okay. Oh shiza! Guess what happened? Yep. Um, it's fucking right. huge and it doesn't fit in the screen <laughs> never mind oh I broke it I broke it oh no which one is it the cow yeah okay I'll just have it really really zoomed in really close on it it's fine uh, but yeah that's Newgrange it's a big white building that you can't really you can get the idea. The corners are too square on it to be a uh, mesolithic structure. Anyway, moving swiftly on. Um, okay. Yeah, Newgrange is associated with um, a deity known as the Dagda, which, uh, if I can open up my thing, I'll discuss it in a, in a second. Who uh, is mentioned as? Um, has been the father of Angus from the wooing of Aideen, that story. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Dagda is one of the two of the Danan, which we discussed before. Uh, he's the father figure of King and a Druid. Uh, he's a fertility god, um, the father of like agriculture, uh, strength, and manly chadness, yep. uh, as well as magic. And he's like the the king drew it. Um, but yeah. 
I think I, I seen you post something in uh, Han's server uh, Doom about that in relation to a D&D thing, did I? I don't think it's internet is working. Um, in what regard? Uh, you posted some stats or something for some uh, deity called the Dagda. Ah, um, but Oh, Balder. Okay, yeah, Balder was a character we mentioned previously in uh, the second episode, so we'll just kind of move on from that. Um, the death and ancestral god Don. Oh, that's a different Don, as in not Dom, the ball, a, a different one. It's kind of stupid, man. Yeah. Oh, he is uh, associated uh, with the. He's like the Irish version of the Germanic Odin. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, so the dog dies, Irish Odin. Ah, yeah. Or Woden, depending on how you wish to pronounce that. Let's not get into that, seeing mm -hmm. that uh, Gren is not here. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was invited, so yeah, he's too cool to show up. Um, the Morrigan Most likely is, a slave. Oh, he's, he's also the, the husband of the Morrigan. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wait, the Morrigan? The Morrigan, yeah, as in the the Raven Queen, I guess, in D and D lore, is basically the Morrigan. Uh, and the dog is sometimes uh, has some similarities with uh, mm. with Crom Dove, which was that uh, Irish devil we discussed, I think, in was it episode f three. Or four, I can't remember. Whichever mm. one was the Ulster Cycle, I think we mentioned Crom Dove. Yeah, I think it's the third one. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm kind of just rambling at this stage because I've lost my place completely. Um, you were on about Mesopotamia, cows. Yeah, I, I was Gosh, supposed to be talking about the post glacial, but. Yeah, the. <laughs> Internet cutting That's out good. has kind of yep. really yep. messed with my concentration. Um, just take it easy. Yeah, I'll just call this episode, I'll rename it something else, like just the Internet Broke, Let's Have a Chat episode. Yeah. So, uh. The, um. The episode that's just going to go about just random history. Most likely. Well, yeah, it's just going to be like the random episode where everything is just kind of brought up. So, uh, well, and of course, this is the first episode that I'm on. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, here's the thing. Uh, what would you be doing after the post-glacial period, just so we can at least maybe have a prelude to whatever that would be? Yeah, we can kind of do like a prelude to what I intended to do rather than what has actually turned out to be. So initially we discussed the mythology and I kind of brought that up because uh, I know you guys are really yep. interested in like storytelling kind of stuff. So I was like, okay, well, if I could do that, I can get you engaged and hopefully build an audience mm -hmm. and then um, then br go into the actual archaeology, which is what this is supposed to be, starting from the beginning in the post-glacial and then leading into, uh, so basically, the early evidence, which is Paleolithic, then Mesolithic and kind of... Mount Sandal and early settlement in Ireland. Uh, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll touch on the continent a bit, mm -hmm. but um, I wanted to kind of focus more on Ireland because it seems that's kind of where most of my main, yeah. main research for my degree was in. But um, our, uh, yeah, the yeah. then I'd move on to Neolithic, and then uh, touching on the Copper Age, but not focusing too much on it because it doesn't really exist in Ireland. Um, the I think it's like 200 years, which is like nothing in this context. Uh, then moving into the Bronze Age, Iron Age, and then we'll spend a, quite a while talking about medieval stuff because uh, I know everyone on here probably has an interest in medieval things. Hmm. Uh, then we'll move on to post-medieval, early modern, um, we get to talk about Pike and Shot, which I know Han is kind of interested in. Oh, yeah. And then um, we move into uh, 
kind of more recent stuff with the, the Irish famine because Ash wanted me to cover the famine. She wanted me to cover St. Patrick actually, which we'll do a special on St. Patrick's Day. Um, mm -hmm. I know, Stu, you asked would I cover something to do with the Troubles in the North, although it isn't specifically archaeology. Oh. <laughs> I just didn't do that because there is some archaeology things associated with it in relation mm. to the... Uh, the the bog mur the bog murders, where the IRA have uh, hidden people in the bogs, so we can cover that side that side of it. Um, <laughs> yeah, the well, what I would refer to specifically is more so the forensic side of archaeology, on and use a case study to do with the bog murders, to uh, describe that if you know what I mean. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, there's also cases in similar to that in like South America, you know, like think people like Pablo Escobar mm. and whatnot. Yeah. Which archaeologists have brought in on because their murders have happened in the past. So it's forensic archaeology. Um, yeah. But uh, that stuff tends to be controversial because you're catching criminals uh, as well as researching past events. <laughs> Yeah. I was just saying, like, um, I, I guess it could be controversial, but at the same time, you're discovering a past crime. Mm -hmm. And with the person still being alive yeah. that committed the crime, it uh, gets a bit hairy sometimes. Oh, I mean, as long as you get the police blessing. Oh, no, um, you're doing it with with the uh, the police will be the ones hiring you on to do Whoa. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Honestly, that seems legit work. Yeah. It's an interesting thing. I know that it's been happening in South America where some archaeologists are getting brought in for some of that kind of, uh, trying to identify, um, people that have gone missing and stuff, track down their burials and, um, identify them and, uh, give them proper burials, essentially. Yep. Figure out what happened to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of that happened, but moving swiftly on because that's a really depressing topic. Um, <laughs> we could do the famine, which isn't a much of a uh, less depressing topic, but I guess, but it's uh, something interesting, especially for uh, people who are not from Ireland. They might be interested in that. I know uh, Ash really wanted me to discuss uh, the Irish in, in America. Uh, which I can do that, and the... Oof, my internet is being really crap right now. Let's see if I swap onto the other thing, if it uh, improves or not. Do, do, do. But yeah, the Irish in America, I could talk about something to do with like the Oregon Trail, or I don't know, some of the stuff in the south. Uh, maybe we could discuss something to do with like the Irish in wars over there in uh, the Civil War, is that it? I think so. I'm just rambling to cover the time because I've lost my... I don't know much about it. Oh, yeah. we got you back. Okay. Um, what were you saying? Oh, it's, um, I was saying that mythology-wise, I do know a bit about ancient Mesopotamia, mm -hmm. most... But if it goes about the actual history, I don't know shit about it. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Um, I don't know much about the actual history of Mesopotamia. I'm just using it as a case it's... study to talk about and the one of the earliest human societies is mm. Mesopotamia. Um, Want to know a small fact about it? Go on. Um... You know that almost every civilization uh, around the world has their own flood myth, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yeah. The earliest recorded um, example of the flood myth is actually from the Epic of Gil. Ah. And that was a side story. Yeah. I remember as the. the At least the world's um, the man Unapishtim. Mm -hmm. 
quickly challenged the king Gilgamesh to stay awake for seven uh, for six days and seven nights. Mm -hmm. So he would tell him the secret on how he became immortal. Mm -hmm. And Gilgamesh being the uh, arrogant man he is actually fell asleep right after he finished talking. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. The, uh, do you... But... Go on. No, go on. No, no, go on. on. I was just about to top off your story, but I was going to wait until you finish the story. And it's actually kind of funny because um, just to make sure that um, the king can't lie. Mm -hmm. um, Unipishtim actually asks his wife for every night that Gilgamesh is asleep, mm -hmm. bake a bread. <laughs> so this way I can prove to him, because the bread has aged, and, and with every day, that the king is not ready for immortality if he can't even s conquer sleep. <laughs> That's a good point. It's and it's funny because this is a side story mm -hmm. in the and the king's quest for immortality and everything. Yeah. Just a random one-off character. Hi, this is my fan insert of the man who saved the world from the flood, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, we then later will see also happen with things like the Bible. Um, it's weird. Yeah, that... a lot of the early stories are replicated a few times. I'll discuss more about that, but first, uh, oh. Doom seems we're discussing yeah. stories. Do you know what the earliest known story is? Well... Yes, it um, is the Epic of Gilgamesh. It is, in fact, the Epic of Gilgamesh, yeah. Which uh, I thought was really interesting, because it's the earliest known, like, full story. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah. And it has actually been replicated in its um, normal language. Yeah. Which you don't see that, that often nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really... Seeing how most of the languages usually die out mm -hmm. after after a certain while, yeah, it's it's funny to see the oldest language that we have, um, well, stone recordings of, mm -hmm. still survive to this day, even though it's only spoken by a certain few people. Yeah, Sanskrit. Um, mm -hmm. What was I going to say? Did you know that the uh, um, original Greek pantheon didn't actually include Aphrodite? Aphrodite is like a, a Greek, uh, like a Greekization of Ishtar. Ah, yeah, that's why yeah. she that's why she kind of doesn't fit into a lot of the 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 myths. It, She's kind of shoehorned in as an afterthought. Uh, there was another one that was actually more of a cultish um, mm -hmm. god. Was the um, was another god of party and I think wine Dionysus. Yeah, Dionysus. Yeah. That one has been an alchemy an amalgamation of multiple gods. Oh yeah, the, f the fun guy. He's just the fun a... guy that everyone yeah. wants to be around and just yeah. party with. Yeah. Mostly because they just saw how a bunch of cultists were like, okay, we're having the time of our lives. Can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds like an excuse for a piss up, but uh, hell yeah, yeah. What? Why not when you can? Um, mm -hmm. So what was I gonna? I had something. Oh yeah, I said I was gonna discuss um, stories uh, reappearing. So one of the things we mentioned previously uh, in passing, and again we'll be mentioning it in passing, is how. Um, in a lot of the, I guess, Christian stories, you mentioned how the the biblical flood is similar to uh, the one mentioned in uh, um, in the epic in the epic of Gilgamesh. Um, also in uh, Egyptian uh, mm -hmm. mythology, we also get the images of like Isis and uh, uh, Horus, which is very similar to uh, Mary and Jesus. 
That I did not know, actually. Yeah. We also have uh, Anubis and John the Baptist are very similar. Um, because uh, Anubis mm. originally was like, not necessarily a baptism, but he kind of uh, purge, like gets rid of your sins by washing them away in uh, some magical pool that he has um, before you get your heart weighed by, uh, what's the name of the guy? It's a H, uh, like a hippo crocodile thing. No, that was the one that ate the heart. Yeah, um, he eats the heart if you're uh, if you're a bad guy. But uh, <laughs> Anubis would wash wash it before you got in, which is very similar to uh, baptism. Um, the heart eater was Amit. Yeah. Or Amut. Amut. Or but. Um, yeah. Which quite literally the title was the mm -hmm. eater of hearts so mm -hmm. yeah yeah and uh osiris as well being the the old father or uh the the father of the gods which is yeah it's actually quite weird that we yeah. don't have multi-god pantheons anymore mm -hmm. that's in well since the since Christianity, we basically switched over yeah. to monotheism. Like well, the, the except for except for the East, but yeah. the East are weird. The the first monotheistic religion I can think of off the top of my head is Amun, which is where Amun, which was created by Tutankhamun's father. I can't remember his name, but uh, yeah, the sun god. Where they mm, he started that was Egyptian. Yeah, he started praising the sun, and uh, well, the sun being the symbol of the god, but yeah, Amun. But yeah, it uh, ah, okay. again, monotheism kind of reflects that a bit as well. But uh, Tutankhamun ending up uh, restoring the the original pantheon is also kind of in a way related to the cult of a moon as well it's also a bit iro ironic seeing mm. that it was a monotheistic religion mm. and then it spread out into being um, mm -hmm. the pantheon again yeah and like you can see even reflections of modern christianity in like in germanic old germanic in including norse in that um Old Germanic religion with the Old Father being Odin or Woden, um, and the Dogda in in Ireland. Um, I'm not trying to trying to think what's the. And then you have Zeus as well. Yeah, Zeus. Uh, Zeus is probably the one that's more is probably influenced more on the modern um, interpretation of the the main god. Um, I was going to like say the name, and I was like, "Yeah, some people might get upset." So I'm like, "I'm not. I'm just going to refrain from doing that." But um, and then you I'll also had fair. the Roman. You yeah. also had the Roman version, Jupiter, right? Jupiter. Or... Yeah. I think it's Jupiter. Yeah. Yeah. The the main god. Um, I always mix him up with Mars, which is the war god. But yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of. Uh, crossovers and you you probably weren't here when I mentioned um, Epina and um, uh, the Morrigan previously and we discussed how Queen Maeve is associated with bringing mead to people because her name literally means the mead bringer <laughs> um, so she's like the woman that carries the special cup that all the warriors drink from which is like a Bronze Age tradition a Bronze Age traditions you know, are really associated with alcohol. Uh, you know, you don't see that often anymore where mm. people are basically named after their profession. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's why a lot of my, like, D&D &D things, people are just named after their professions because they just use, the, like, medievalisms in that. Just because, mm -hmm. one, it's easy to name characters and remember what they do. And two, it uh, also reflects the time period. Um, one of the interesting things that, like, came up with a joke off the cuff it mightn't be as funny as it is in my head but one of the interesting things that spread from China was alcohol 
And as you can assume, that spread quickly from China. Bye, Sharona. <laughs> <coughs> but yeah, no, alcohol became like one of the main things that would bring warriors together and people to come together to hang out and chill and be like, hey. So, cool. so you're saying that the Silk Road before was the drunk road? The drunk road. <laughs> they were literally dr- drunk driving those camels. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Fucking GTA. <laughs> GTA. <laughs> well, Theft. actually, um, GTC, Grand yeah. Theft Camel. Oh. Yeah. I'm not it's sure. Camel races, though. I'm trying to remember the domestication of camels. I'm not going to Google it because my internet will die. But, uh, oh. yeah. Oh, I'm going to. I gotta... <laughs> I might mention to Ritualist, can he do me a drawing of the Grand Theft Camo? <laughs> <laughs> we do a t-shirt. Oh, I want to do a couple of Just t-shirts or something. Multi, yeah. Multi-camel drifting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm not sure where everyone went today. There's not many people around. I guess it's because all of the different shows, everyone is doing shows like every day of the week at the moment. But uh, that's okay. People just get burned uh, out. But yeah. Um, well, tales ended, so that's one less. That's fair enough. Yeah, I'm trying to end. It. I'm, burn I'm trying to end my uh, my D and D game so that I can uh, have uh, extra time to work on researching for this show. And uh, actually, just ended on the Skyrim reference. That always goes well with it. Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to watch the final or, episode. Or... Of tales. Yeah. Or if you want to be funny about it, have a final boss, but it's like really, really easy, and you beat it in like <laughs> ten minutes. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, um, for some reason, um, my players have gotten the idea that um, Nuka is joining the joining to do a uh, a cameo. So I'm half thinking of actually asking him to play the main bad guy at the end. <laughs> and what players do you just mean, Jurg? <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> Are we still live? Yeah, we're still live. I'm just. And I have it up. no opinion on the matter. Yeah, I'm just. I'm just about to, to wrap it up. Um, right. So, because uh, I've noticed that we're about fifty minute, fifty two minutes in. So, yeah, yeah. thanks very much for watching. Uh, below should be a link for my Streamlabs if you wish to donate towards me getting satellite internet, and we can actually do the show live rather than doing it after the fact and uploading it later. Uh, so, thanks for watching. Uh, any final thoughts, guys, or anything you'd like to plug? Um, not much. Uh, let's see. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you have planned next, if you want, maybe? I'm not sure if you have anything planned quite yet. But... I might actually retry the post-Galatial episode. Okay. Yeah. Be a bit more top of just, have, just have a bit more research under um, under the belt. Yeah, the oh, problem... Post Glacial 2, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> nice H2. Nice yeah. H2. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, nice H2, baby. Oh, I'm going to have to get a bunch of fucking... Oh, fucking we just have, rich, uh, have Ritualist uh, draw the fucking crew oh. in Ice Age form. <laughs> oh. Who's going to be the squirrel? Oh, I-, I leave that up to him. I don't like asking him to do things because I can't Find pay out him. next time on Kafu and Archaeologist. Yeah, uh, I'll, uh, I'll I'll invite him to the next episode and see if uh, see. Uh, the only uh, thing I would want to plug, I guess, um, me and Cross and probably some others may do a very very fucking nerdy podcast thing mm-hmm. where we talk about the Force in Star Wars because apparently oh. that's a big topic. <laughs> oh yeah, but what about the Force movie? Midichlorians. <laughs> And if Again. you've not seen or heard of yet, um, Cross of Iron finished up yesterday, uh, yeah. featuring Ooh. more crosses than normal, as I uh, cameoed as uh, Sergeant John O'Connor, mm-hmm. which uh, was pretty I've fun. just realized the only complaint, there was no Cross of Iron in the campaign stew, no one got a Cross of Iron medal at the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck, that actually ended. Yeah. Yeah. It ended yesterday. Damn. Yeah. I should probably watch it. I popped on at the end to uh, 
to shoot a battle suit for to what? fucking provide the the squad support guy with fucking. I mean, you suppressed the machine, sniper. Light, light I was quite useful. Yeah. Do anything. Yeah. Bruh. I, I thought I finished him off and then passed to kill him. I'm like, oh, okay. I'll make these stole you kill. Yeah. yeah. Fucking Oof. kill, Steve. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I keep joking with Pass that they're going to start a beef, but it's going to be like one of those fake beefs, like like Biggie Smalls and Tupac. A fake beef? <laughs> yeah, they're just fake, like you're both Pasta, in Pasta, you stole my beef. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, maybe during the Star Wars Bruh. we'll start a fake beef just for the crack. Because uh, my, my character hates Jedi, so... Yeah, that might be fun. Uh, yeah. Fake E-drama. Yeah. Fake E-drama, e yeah. <laughs> I love, like in wrestling love shows, they have a shitty rivalry that yeah. just goes on. Yeah. Well, that's why uh, one of the episodes I was like shitting on Norwegians. Just to, just to see would he respond, but he didn't. <laughs> I don't think he cared, but yeah. He's too much shit going on himself. Just fair enough. So anyway, um... Would anyone like me to throw anything in the description below for them? Dom streams. Watch Dom stream. Uh, Stu will be yes, doing the podcast. Uh, yeah, I need to yeah, we'll probably stream this week. At some point, yeah. Stu will be doing uh, the podcast and uh, a Star Wars game at some point. Yep. Um, I will most likely be doing my own thing after mm -hmm. the whole Tales debacle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's mm. fair enough are you streaming it anywhere would you like to plug the plug um in? I am going to be setting it up in one way or another is this the kingmaker thing or is this a different thing this is the gestalt kingmaker ah oh yeah with bill yeah Where as we... well as ha as well as han and ritualist nice and the bulb the bulb Featuring Dom as the Bope. And the Bope! Yeah. Which is the bear Pope, I assume. Though the only problem... Mm -hmm. The only problem is I need to get off my ass and start building more shit for it. That's fair That's... enough. It's kind of a lot to... Fucking yeah. burnout got me hard. <laughs> That's fair enough. Like That's why I'm kind of taking a break. Because I need more time to work mm -hmm. on, on this show. And burnout is setting in. And uh, I'm just going to maybe appear in... A couple of other shows for a um, moment, I'm... just to take a break. It's really nice to not have to DM and just pop onto someone else's. <laughs> so, uh... mm -hmm. Did we end the thing yet or not? No, I'm just about to end. Can I go home yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> all right. Oh, Thanks for watching, and uh, I've been Cool Cross, and we'll see you all next time. Bye bye. Yeah. Yeah.